Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to the What, Why, and How Can I podcast. Before we go into the interview, I'd love for you to subscribe, share, like the content, comment down below, whatever you have to do, ring the bell. Today we're going to have Elena Kraftschick. She's a dietitian. Um, we'll be talking a little bit about diet, uh, what it means, what a dietitian does. Also, a healthy diet, not healthy diet, then and what her schedule is, what her daily schedule is, what are her routines, um, the patients she sees. So, um... Let's go there. Elena Kravchuk. Yes. Thank me. you so much for coming on the podcast, yes. <laughs> uh, for making time. Uh -huh. First of all, this has been long. It's been a long time coming. I know. I'm yes. sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Corona happened, you know. So. Exactly. Life <laughs> yeah. and just things are unpredictable right yeah. now. Um, but again, thank you for making time yes, for coming for out. Me. Yeah. You, you are a I'm educated a, woman, a registered, somewhat, yeah. yes, a registered <laughs> dietitian. Yes, I am. And um, registered dietitian nutritionist or just a dietitian? So my credential, I, my, I have my bachelor's in nutrition and food with the emphasis on dietetics. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so now like the R Academy, it's RD. My, my, my credentials behind my mm -hmm. name is RD or mm -hmm. RDN. So registered dietitian or registered dietitian nutritionist kind of, mm -hmm. it encompasses the nutrition field. But you know how you hear the saying, no, all, th no, all thumbs are... Fingers. Fingers, but not no, all, all fingers. fingers are thumbs. Yeah, you know, okay, hold on. All thumbs are fingers, but not all fingers are thumbs. Okay, okay. It's kind of yes. like that with nutritionists and dietitians. Like, all dietitians are considered nutritionists, but not okay. all nutritionists are considered dietitians. Okay. Just because our schooling is a little different. And then by like states, states regulate um, the title registered dietitians. There's mm -hmm. more liability and just your certification and what like the schooling that you have to go mm -hmm, through. Mm -hmm. But for nutrition, and it, Okay, you can have your bachelor's and obviously if you have your master's, your PhD, there's that for you. But mm -hmm. like anyone, no state regulates the, especially I don't think California does the term or the title nutritionist. So you could okay. be a nutritionist. Next okay. week you could start selling something and be like, oh, okay, I'm educating enough. Or like, you know, on Instagram, on anywhere you see people, you do, yeah, they, do their, they do their own research and then they yeah. could, you know, start a blog page and now they're a nutritionist. But it's like, do they have the schooling? Do they have, you know, yeah, yeah, the yeah, credential, yeah. anything to back them up? So okay. my title is a uh, registered dietitian. And my degree is in food and nutrition with the mm -hmm. dietetic emphasis. And then okay. after for a dietitian, um, once you complete your bachelor's, you're eligible now if it's through an accredited program to apply to a dietetic internship. And most diet like internships are about like a year long program mm -hmm. where you have your different rotations. You have your food service, uh, you have your clinical, you have um, community and like a couple of different other ones. So it's like 1,200 hours of experience practice where you have your um, preceptors and you have. Wow, that's um, a lot of hours. Yeah. So. And you work for free. So. <laughs> yeah, um, that's that's not fair. Um, but you have like, you know, your um, things that you have to fulfill. And then once you graduate your internship, you're eligible now to sit in for like our commission board exam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then you get your certification. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So th it's just a little different schooling. Like my schooling, there's a lot of science, like between just a nutrition degree and a dietetics degree. There's mm -hmm. a lot more, just the schoolwork is different. There's a lot more science classes, um, just like medical nutrition therapy that a lot of like nutrition people don't, don't have to take yeah so okay yeah. so it's a little bit more in depth and more detail yeah, yeah a little bit mm -hmm. which is which is probably good yeah I mean, you know how many science classes <laughs> i took all of them yeah <laughs> so that's crazy so what types of jobs are there out there for a dietitian um so i'm a clinical dietitian but okay. you could do community so for community i know people who work like at WIC. um they work at school you know in school mm -hmm. districts um, you could do sports nutrition. You could do private. Um, I know I've worked at an eating disorder facility. So there's mm -hmm. a lot you could do. Like gyms have. I know actually one of my preceptors that I worked with, she knew someone who works like as a dietitian, but at a grocery store. Mm -hmm. But for the, that grocery store wanted someone there that, you know, people are shopping and you are there as a resource for people who are. Wow. That's yeah. A so there's a lot you could store. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, probably like hey, Whole Foods, or Whole Foods somewhere tonight? like a layer. I don't know. Um, but yeah. there's like a lot you could do. I think people just don't know about it as you know as much yeah. but it's like a career that's like on the like rise the and only, it's a new science so. the only dietitians i knew growing up was my lunch ladies in <laughs> yeah. high school you know? well i mean those lunch ladies aren't the one who works for the school district in the office doing everything yeah that's a dietitian but not okay, you know but the, the, not the, the lunch no, you, no. no that's like diet uh, aids or you know the, yeah, those those the, the lunch lady <laughs> those are the favorite those yeah, are yeah. lunch ladies yeah yeah um so, so definitely a lot just like there's a nurse and a mm -hmm. lot of different yeah different things concentrations you can do. that you could focus on so yeah. diet you can be mm -hmm. a 
a registered dietitian, <laughs> but also a lot of different types of <laughs> things you could do. So before maybe becoming a registered dietitian, mm -hmm. did you think of where you wanted to be? Or you're no. just like, hey, I'm gonna do this and see where it takes no. me. No, so like my whole journey, it was in like, oh, you know, I had like this dream of becoming I a be registered dietitian. No. When I grow up. It was kind of like I graduated high like high school early. Okay. I started college, like went straight into well, I started with like Sierra. Um, and then I was just doing my general ed. I had no yeah. like I think at one point I wanted to be like a pharmacist or an orthodontist, which I hate teeth, so I don't know why I was doing <laughs> orthodontist. Um but I think I was taking like a basic nutri like nutrition class because someone's like, oh, like start taking classes where you could kind of like, if you need prerequisites to, you know, kind of build off on. So don't just be doing general ed. So I okay. think I like I took nutrition 10 because it was like a requirement for your GE. And I remember everyone was kind of at that point was doing nursing, yeah. which nursing is phenomenal. And I know a lot of great nurses that I work with. So yeah. I think that's a great career. There's always going to be a job demand for nurses. But I think I was just like, oh, everyone's doing nurses. I don't want to, you know, nursing. Yeah. I don't want to do nursing. Um, so it was my professor was a registered dietitian i was like oh okay like this sounds kind of interesting you know i yeah. liked metabolism um that interests me yeah. also at the same time i kind of at that time during that season of my life i knew people who were going like cancer and just like how like their diet and stuff Affected. was affecting them and then mm -hmm. like someone who kind of like through the you know grief i knew a friend who was battling like an eating disorder so just kind of like stuff that like triggered an interest but it wasn't like oh my gosh this is what i want to do so yeah, i was like yeah. well okay i guess like no one's doing Nutrition and diabetes, well, I guess that's what I'm going to do, you like, know? Well, check this so, out. <laughs> Growing up, like, we kind of grew up together. Yeah. And um, now I'm not a dietitian, so I'm much fluffier <laughs> than you. No. But I could definitely use a diet dietitian, Di I feel like. Can't we all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. it's definitely nice. Um, in the back of our minds, we all know that. Mm -hmm food affects us in a good or bad way yeah. but it's definitely nice knowing the science behind mm -hmm. it and uh and being like, able to apply it to your yeah, life apply yeah. it yeah. to your life exactly yeah. what are some things that you can maybe share with us about applying to your life yeah, about, about applying simple <laughs> i'm not things gonna to, get like don't get yeah technical or deep or anything like no, that no, because yeah, i feel like this basics. is gonna people are gonna be like oh come and bite me i'm gonna give you three things eat okay. your fruits and vegetables <laughs> eat fruits and vegetables yes okay. i think i was like our society we do not eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and there's a lot of benefits that come from eating i mean it's a basic thing you all know yeah. what we tell our kids you know like i mean i don't have kids yet but eat we your tell veggies. kids you know it's like one of those things that eat your veggies but i feel like people don't eat their fruits and veggies mm -hmm. it's good for your gut you know it's good for it builds like your gut flora there's good fiber second eat mm. your fiber <laughs> eat your fiber you know okay i'm on a disclaimer um i'm a lot of fruits and vegetables okay and like some grains have fiber um which okay part of as part of my job like there's no not like say boundaries like when i come and talk to my patients yeah it kind of starts off with like hey how's your appetite you know how are you doing how's any trouble chewing or swallowing you know like any nausea like or vomiting Twinkies? yeah no but then it's like one of the questions okay i don't know if you hear, like one of the questions i have to ask and yeah. it, it's kind of like oh how are you about like how are your bowel, bowel movements? Everything yeah. coming in, going out, okay, you yeah, know? Right. And sometimes people kind of like freeze up and like, oh my gosh, it's happening that. But I was like, <laughs> it's kind of part of my job and you kind of become, you know, you're like, it hey, I need to know. Yeah, healthy. I need to know like how yeah. you're doing, you know? So I feel like with me telling you to eat like fruits and vegetables, increasing your fiber, it's good for your gut health. Um, mm -hmm. Just overall will benefit you, I think. Mm -hmm. And then three, which is very simple, stay hydrated. Like, I okay. think a lot of, <laughs> these are not things that you're looking probably like, Honestly, if we want to talk about like weight loss and stuff, that's no, probably no, a different but thing. But stay hydrated. A lot of people have so many issues. It goes back to your like, you know, your bowels mm -hmm. and like just your skin, how you're feeling, what's especially like headaches. A lot of people have headaches. And the first thing I think sometimes I ask them like, hey, like, are you staying hydrated? A lot of time it's just like people, Simple especially things. Slavic parents, Slavic parents. Do not drink water. Like to get my parents, my mom and dad to drink water is like the hardest thing they in the want, world. Like, yeah. Or yeah, like some kind of sock or something. You know, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. no, just drink a cup of water. So I think just like starting off basic, because I think a lot of people try to make these big changes and they're not sustainable. So mm. I feel like, especially like with weight loss, people do like these crash diets or like mm -hmm. these bad diets. Like, yes, they lose. Like, I think the funniest thing one time I saw, I was at a grocery store and there was a magazine. It was like, lose 24 pounds in like 12 hours. And I'm like, <laughs> no that just doesn't happen <laughs> that's you know good. that's not sustainable in long term you know so i think a lot of times you see with like crash diets and stuff like yeah, people yeah. you know yo-yo effect of dieting so what you said i mean i, I think it's super important because yeah. a lot it's of basic, times you know? yeah it's basic and a <laughs> lot of times people look for some extravagant mm -hmm. uh secret formula to mm -hmm. be healthy yeah 
But I think if like like you said, fruits, veggies, vi- fibers, and water. If a regular person can stick to that every day, yeah, they will probably see. I think you'll a feel better. Yeah, yeah you feel better. I think for your health, you'll de- like. I think you're definitely. I mean, it's not like it's not magic, and obviously, if yeah. there's like things like people want to do, obviously, there's like more in-depth conversations you could have mm-hmm. with the dietitian. You know, if you have serious yeah, problems, if you have, or well, something. I feel like I mean, if you want like a meal plan, obviously, you could talk to someone who give you a meal plan or help you like with weight loss. But I feel like for not going into all different things, which a lot of things are like, hey, you don't know people's medical backgrounds and what kind of things you even say that you know on here, mm-hmm, but just mm-hmm. like the basics that like things that you could do to be sustainable and long term. Don't not you know, because I feel like a lot of stuff, a lot of people. The changes you make, you want to make them sustainable. Okay. Because then if you kind of short term, you know. Short kind of term. Things, yeah. Is it yeah. really, you know, I feel like my experience with people I've seen, especially like, well, we'll go Everybody back to dieting. Quick yeah, results. quick and easy, you know, and then like, yes, you lose the 10, 15 pounds in like the month and stuff. And yeah. then it's like after that, you're done with your diet. Like, and you're you like, see your okay. You're yeah. like, whoa, whoa bro. What happened? <laughs> that yeah. went the other way. <laughs> yeah. So I think like, I mean, for me, I'm a very new dietitian, but I think yeah. I worked, I worked in eating disorders and I worked at, uh, a clinic w- which was like bariatric surgery and you know for like weight loss so i've seen like very two big ends of the spectrum i've mm-hmm. seen people who are like have anxiety about eating and they're like anorexic and like barely you know surviving yeah, and then yeah. i've seen people who are like oh can't control their- themselves anymore so i feel like my go-to right now and like if i don't know you or like you know mm-hmm. talk more in depth with you it's just have a balanced diet you know okay yeah, yeah so yeah. just that's you it know, looks different for everyone but yeah you know. i never um mm-hmm. I always imagine someone with an eating distor- disorder, disorder to be extremely like skinny. Like, mm-hmm. no, there's different types of eating disorders. Yeah, so, can, yeah. can we talk a little bit about that and so, where that comes from and how it affects your life? Because I always hear, like, especially in school, it was more focused on the mm-hmm, girls, mm-hmm. and I hear like eating disorder, eating disorder. Personally, I've never known anybody with mm-hmm. an eating disorder, but I really want to know because maybe someone listening is going some through that, like. What is that? Where does it come from? And so, like, the eating disorder facility that I worked at was a like it was a residential faci- facility for women. Mm-hmm. So, but we had a lot of people who were, had like anorexia, but we also had a lot of people who were, had like bulimia too. So, bulimia is a little easier to hide because you know, I mean, not all you know people with eating disorders are going to be super thin, mm-hmm. like right. So, if there's like, people who could be like over you know overweight or something, but they're still you know going through like those behaviors. But a lot mm-hmm. of the thing, the stuff with the like, eating disorders. It's a lot of, um, which in our facility, it was a team, like it was an, a team of like a psychologist, counselors, doctors working mm-hmm. together because it's not just a dietitian focuses focuses on that. Yeah, like yeah. a dietitian works with like their meal plan and like you do some counseling Helps with that. Recover. Yeah, but a lot of it was like therapy with counselors and like um, therapists because a lot of like their eating disorder was a tip of the iceberg that they're trying to control what everything's go- also so like is going. Mental health. Yeah, mental. Health, like a lot, like had that. a lot of people who had like bipolar disorder, you know, um, there's anxiety disorder. I mean, there's like, there's different ones. I mean, I okay, can't, I'm not a therapist things. yet, but yeah, there's yeah. different things going on. So a lot of it was like people who are, who are like physical abuse, you know, mental mm-hmm. abuse, just kind of sexual abuse mm-hmm. that like, I can't control anything in my life, but I'm controlling this. Mm-hmm. And like food is the thing I'm controlling. So if I'm telling you, I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to eat, you know? So yeah. it's like, it kind of oh, resulted in that. So a lot of that's... eating disorders, like a lot of like the women, like I've worked with. Yeah. It was just, you look at their life, you hear their stories. You're like, oh my God. This is like yeah. I mean, I'm this sure is crazy. You know, yeah. I'm sure. It's I mean, then then you stuff. have those people who are like just trying to get back at your their parents. You know, so it's like <laughs> you want to feel for you know both, but just kind of also. I mean, you catch signs like yeah. You know, there's little things that like trigger. You're like, well, you know, okay, so people I, will count I, calorie. You know, like super like yeah. Okay, so I'm still not not understanding the eating disorder part. Like, without obviously naming any mm-hmm. names or people or whatever. What are some like eating disorders that people had like what is an eating disorder um not so i like so any of us can mm-hmm. diagnose ourselves or anything do but, not diagnose yourself yeah but like what's well, an like example a lot of, of some people, eating okay, disorders so some, like, or like what's okay, an example it's been a while some... since like i worked there but like a lot of like we had people who were like they extreme calorie counting like there's people mm. who they couldn't eat in public they would hide when they were eat like um people who i mean obviously with like bulimia you had mm-hmm. people who would you know like pocket their food or like height like there's just i mean because we had to sit at the t- i mean i can't right now i can't tell you like specifically probably do right. not include this part but like there's different things that like triggers or like things you catch in people that you're like that's not normal b- food behavior like like grandma at the buffet yeah, putting yeah, food like, in the purse yeah no but it'd be like, like you joke, would be sitting but... there at the table and it's like 
we'd serve them their meal. Mm -hmm. Like there was some, you guys, I don't even know how people do it. They would either hide it in their pocket or like pocket into their mouth just not to swallow. Or they're like freak out about like, cause we would put like, I worked there as a diet, so there's a sample plate that you play, then mm. it'd be like half a cup of rice, you know, a serving of like the protein, whatever they yeah. had. And so based on my serving, they had to plate their own food. And it would be sometimes it would be like, okay, half a cup of rice. I kind of know what that looks like. And they yeah. would do like a, like a teaspoon or, you know, yeah. a tablespoon. And you're like, no. And they panic like that they can't eat this much food that their body's not going to process it. You know, like that's not normal behavior for you to right, think that, that like half a you know, half a that cup kind of, of rice. Yeah. I can't even. But they become so concentrated on like food that like it's food is not nourishment to them anymore. It's just like it's like a you know they don't want to like people like an starve obstacle, them. So yeah, kind so of it's obstacle. like we had people. It was really sad to talk about and like yeah. you know like witness Watch. it, but they're just like like I I can't eat you know, and you're like okay <laughs> like but obviously you have to work with like therapists. Yeah, and stuff yeah, like that's that. that's tough. But, yeah, it's it was also very emotionally draining sometimes too. Did, did you yeah. work with anybody that's like uh, the opposite of that? Like well, eating like crazy? And, I mean, that facility. And you're like, where are they getting food? <laughs> no, that facility. Yeah, we had people who like sneak in food too. Um, I mean, that facility, we did have like some like overweight people. Yeah. Who, but there was, theirs wasn't like. Um, Extreme. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it was more of like bulimia where they would, which they weren't allowed to go like to the restroom by themselves. Or you had, they had to count out loud to make sure that they're not vomiting. They're not, you know, kind of like mm. making them start, themselves purge and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but at the, <laughs> I worked at a bariatric clinic. So it's mm -hmm. like people who are trying to get um, surgery, you know, for weight loss. So mm -hmm. on that end of the spectrum, I saw like a lot of extremely overweight Okay, okay. People like extremely overweight, you know. Okay, so um, so I told you I've seen two of the spectrum. I mean, I've seen people that's who super are like, interesting. yeah, their BMI really, really high. I mean, BMI obviously is not like a you know indicator for anything. It's just yeah. another piece of information they use. But like when you have someone with BMI of like twelve, thirteen versus someone who was like fifty-seven, you know, it kind of gives you yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a big definitely. Range. I mean, I'm not a specialist in eating disorder. I worked there briefly, but it was. I mean, you know, but the experience is yeah, it was it's definitely super like it's good, but then also it makes you like. You need to turn off your brain when you're around people, you know, you know, or in like side because you're like, oh my gosh, like, is that normal? You know, you kind of start. You're looking yeah. at everybody's for side effects. Yeah, because, <laughs> you know, you don't want to see because you're like, oh, these people are normal because people have like, you know, yeah, their yeah. days. But so what is on? So if we go to the other side of the spectrum, the big people. A lot of it is already like. Um, core morbidities with their like medical stuff. Okay. A lot of it's like hormonal imbalances. So it's like okay. they were, you know, struggling with their weight, struggling with their weight and came to a point where. They, they can't no longer with people who have like thyroid problems you know i mean a, a lot of different things okay but, yeah. so it's, it's not always like uh like a mental health no or no just a like lot a... of the times it's just people like to eat sometimes you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> but like bottom line it is i mean look yeah. at our society not that. right well yeah we love yeah, eating yeah. Dude, like a good big mac or something <laughs> yeah. you know but i mean that I, happened but now i'm in clinical so you know <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but i feel yeah. like now and maybe just because i'm growing up because I mean, back in college, you'd be like Taco Bell every mm. day. Yeah. But now people are becoming more like aware yeah. of what they eat, mm -hmm. and not because they're like super. But then this. also, you have like at your fingertips, you you know, you could Google stuff. You know, like it tells you. I feel like people are more aware, and there's a lot of like different fads and like Instagram and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That kind of tells you more, you know. And you grow up and you're like, I want something better than, you know, like yeah. Taco Bell is great, but you don't want Taco Bell every single, you know. Right, right. Day. And now, to be honest, like I'll have Taco Bell. was like, dude, it tasted way better <laughs> yeah. back then. Yeah. Like, you know. and See, for me, like, I can't eat Taco Bell because I know how it's made. So <laughs> oh I have God. my own psychological You know the science thing. behind it. Yeah, and I'm like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I mean, it's delicious. Like the idea of like a chalupa sounds so good, but yes. I feel like I probably have to bring my own meat, you know. Oh, like don't okay. put the... But dude, like a gourmet chalupa, <laughs> yeah, that would be that delicious, yeah. <laughs> dude. Oh, that's so, a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what is your like your 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 day kind of consistent? So I'm a clinical dietitian, but I work at a skilled nursing. So my okay. predominantly my um let's see, the people who I work with are sixty five and older. Mm -hmm. I mean I have I have some patients where what we call them residents who are under that age. Mm -hmm. But mostly it's people who are transitioning from the hospital or like their loved ones can't take care of them anymore. So sometimes they come here short short term or mm -hmm. We have like a unit that's long term, um, but most of them who are transitioning from like the hospital, they either ha need wound care or, mm -hmm. you know, they're just not stable to go home. Mm -hmm. um, so for my day, like it's I mean, it's different like day to day. If no, it's different. Like if it's the beginning of the month versus, the, you know, the rest End of the month. Of the month. Because, okay. Yeah, because beginning of the month, um, I have monthly weights. 
And so it's like anyone who triggers for significant weight gain or weight loss, I think it's like 5% or five pounds mm -hmm. um, for nine, like 30 days and then like seven and a half percent for like 90 days and then like 10% okay, so or more, like you know, check so, up time. Um, so it's like everyone gets weighed, you know, I mean, there's some people who I have who get made weighed daily or like weekly, but most mm -hmm. of the time, like people, if they're stable, they get weighed monthly. So mm -hmm. my beginning of the month, I have my monthly weight. So everyone who triggers, I have to chart on those people. So it's a little okay. different because. I work for two. So I let's go back. I work for two different facilities, like two uh, sister facilities. So mm -hmm. I'm the only dietitian for two those two facilities. So I, girl. I it's so <laughs> let's not go back. It's so <laughs> stressful. Cause, but for me, it's like stressful because I'm new. Yeah. And I just got I got honestly my whole journey of becoming a dietitian is just like one God, like miracle, like miracle story. Seriously. Yeah. With like my program getting in, like me, like everything lining up. Like I just look back on my like, God, you're so good to me. Yeah. Um. So the way I got my job, I kind of like through word of mouth kind of, I wasn't, I just got my, I just got my degree. Yeah. No, I did my board, like my exam, you know, so I just got my certification. Yeah. Um. And then it was around the holidays. So I'm like, I'm not going to apply anywhere. I'm just going to, you know, wait until Enjoy the holidays, the holidays over, yeah. which Good thing I got my job before Corona happened because now I'm like, I don't know if it happened. But sure. I was just talking to one of my preceptors, like a girl that I did another rotation with like earlier. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hey, like, what are you, you know, working? I'm like, if you hear anything, send it something like my way. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not applying anywhere, but, you know, probably should yeah. start updating my resume, you know, because yeah, that yeah. thing has been in, you know, not <laughs> used forever. <laughs> yeah. Um, So she was like, hey, I work for this. But like I work, she works for like the company that I work with owns six of them, mm -hmm. like six skilled nursing. So she works for two of them. And then. She's like, hey, I know someone who they're looking for an in-house dietitian. They have a consultant. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want, I could reach out and just kind of like, you know, put her in a word. Just kind of, yeah. So, it, like, a month, month went by and I didn't hear from her. And then she reached out. She's like, hey, did he, did he ever reach out? I'm like, no. I'm like, just give me his phone number. So, I reached out like, hey, like, I'm Elena. I'm a dietitian. I'm an entry-level dietitian. Like, I don't know if she told you. I'm like, if you're looking still for the like, coverage, I'm more. And it was like super part-time. But I'm like, hey, a foot in the door is a foot in the door. You know, right, I'm like, you can't complain. I, like, I have no... In like personal, I mean, I have experience from my internship, but it's not like on my own, you know? Right. So I'm like, whatever, I got to start somewhere, even if it's like once or twice a week. So like, right. he's like, yeah, come, like, I'll talk to my D1, come and like talk to us. So I come in and talk to him. And he's like, hey, you know what? We have a sister facility. Yeah. Who's in the same position as right now. They have a consulting dietitian, but they're looking for in-house just so someone to be like their own employee, you know? Mm -hmm. He's like, do you mind talking to them? So I was like, sure. <laughs> like, it's not even like, I guess not even like a formal interview, just kind of more like a meet and greet. Like, like who are you? Like, what are you kind of, uh, yeah. Nice to meet you. What's yeah. your shirt size? <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, yeah, sure. So I went and met with them. Anyways, between two of them, I oversee like 200 um, residents. patients, residents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So like my day to day, like I come, I have usually I check like the, I have like this RD folder where it's like mm -hmm. any kind of, if the doctor has anything, you know, to say or nursing, like if there's anyone like a consult or like a referral for anyone, Mm -hmm. um, I'll make a list of, I go through the list of new admits, anyone who's uh, new to the facility. Mm -hmm. So the thing is the, a little different between people who are like inpatient or like acute dietitians. Mm -hmm. If you're at the hospital, not everyone's triggered to see a dietitian. Like okay. it's based on like a nutrition screen or like if a doctor referral, there's certain like medical diagnosis. Really yeah, watch you. But not everyone who's admitted to the hospital will see a dietitian. Like for me, every new admit I have to see. Um, okay. So I do my new admission, like I go through the list of my new admissions and then I usually also, I have monthly weights, but then also I have weekly weights. Mm -hmm. So anyone who's triggered for like significant weight gain or weight loss weekly, mm -hmm. I'll have to chart on them. And then um, anyone who with skin conditions or like pressure ulcers, mm -hmm. I have to chart on those people too. So okay. I usually, those I just like see monthly. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have my dialysis and like my tube feeders. So, okay, okay. and then as a dietitian, I have to do like monthly audits um, for the kitchen and any kind of kitchen changes, menu changes in the kitchen. I so have are to you sign the lady that makes the menu? Or no, is that the so chef? you know, that's the thing. Like people ask me like, oh, so what do you do? I'm so like, they oh, talk I'm to you like, can we please yeah. have cookies next week? <laughs> no, they're like, oh, you're a dietitian. So like, oh, do you like write out people's like menu, you know, what what they should eat? And I'm like, no, like, I mean, yes, I do. But no, because we use, we use like, uh, it's called RDs for healthcare. For a skilled nursing, we use mm -hmm. RDs for healthcare. So they have like their there are menu cycles that we use. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I sit there and be like, oh, do you want an apple for lunch? Okay, like for 200 people, oh my gosh, that'd be my entire job. You don't be yeah, able to do yeah. anything. So obviously like when I do when I do their assessments, I make sure that their diet order like, you know, goes with their medical diagnosis mm -hmm, of like mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. they have heart stuff going on, you know, or like diabetes. Right. Unless to make they're sure. like specific something yeah, to Yeah, unless them. like, obviously they're, they're allowed to sign like a diet waiver, you know, mm -hmm. that they're like um, refusing, you know, my recommendations, but not just mine. I'm just saying like what the physician right, also right, right. like recommends. Um, but for the most part, it's not like specifically writing out. So, like, if they out, can't like, have like salt or something, then you. Well, usually, yeah. Be, if okay. like if they come in and then sometimes they transfer them over and they put them on like a regular house diet, which is like a regular diet. Um, mm -hmm. and I'll go through and then I see that they have CHF or like you know stuff that's going on, and like, I don't think they should have extra salt in their diet. So I'll mm -hmm. 
update their diet order to make sure that it reflects, you know, mm -hmm. it's appropriate for their okay. medical dike. Have you made any good relationship with any of the residents? Um, some, I guess, like, yes. My long term ones, kind of, it's kind of difficult because a lot of them, I mean, yes, I, I have, but then I'm only there and between you see both so of, them, many of them. Yeah, it's like okay. I have a lot of my short term people, like, I see them, but I see them maybe for like a once i do like their i check in with them if they like yeah. trigger for something but i don't there's a lot of people for me to be like hey how like every day to yeah, check in yeah, on yeah. people you know that's so, a like, lot of people yeah of people so around. i do but then also if they like my long-term people a lot of them have like alzheimer's and dementia and stuff going on so it's like so you're like trying <laughs> to be friends up. but they don't know yeah, who you are like hey how's it going the next day you know so hi like, tom do you remember yeah. me <laughs> no <laughs> no i like no i had oh my gosh there's this lady that I kid you not, every single time I was at work, she made it like she had a note for me to come see her. And I'm like, wow, I like just because she was very particular. And then like she had a colostomy bag. So it was just like, <laughs> OK, that's yeah. So but she was just like she's very like, I want this and this, you know, and I'm like, OK, that's great. Like I could talk to you. But then sometimes you go to talk to them and it's like 30 minutes later, you know, and I'm like, like, oh, I really gotta I get gotta, gotta go, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, but as a dietitian, I'm just going to put it out there like 75 percent of my job is charting. I chart a lot. <laughs> Dude, that's what yeah, nurses yeah, do. Yeah, it's all like these nurses. patient, like interactions, like maybe like five, 10%. Yeah. And then like charting. And then, I mean, I mean, the stuff that you do in the kitchen, like I do the audits, I'll check to make sure that like everything's dated. Like they have a dietary supervisor in the kitchen, but mm -hmm. I still like go and check, make sure that all the temps are there for like the food logs, you know, the sanitation logs. Okay, okay. Um, and then monthly I do like an audit, like where you kind of check everything. So, but yeah, my day, I start with my assessments, kind of, yeah. you know. So how has, how, did things change when like COVID started? Did you yes. start seeing people less? Or no, more? so I, like we still get a lot of people coming in. Like a regular amount regular. of people coming in. It's not like oh COVID happened. Um, I think during the summer they were saying the sense is a little low, but just because like a lot of people are not doing their selective surgery. Like right now, I have a lot of like hip people, like people status post falls. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean my population obviously that's normal, but yeah. um, I think the only thing that's different for us is like we're not allowed visitation so a lot of people who had like family come in like mm. we have people calling skyping or something but people are not allowed to see like their family so okay. i think that's can like they even... leave to see their family no no okay. i mean no unless it's just like not we... recommended no a lot some of them like when they leave it's like if they leave for like a hospital like an appointment with the doctor so you know yeah, yeah. we have like a physician obviously on who's there who like oversees it but if they have their cardiologist or something they have someone they have to see mm -hmm. um then they'll leave but for the most part we don't let like outside people into because okay. they do like you know covid screening and stuff and then like mm -hmm. they do covid testing right now um but not everyone's allowed to just okay. that that kind of change so okay cool i mean yeah. I, I just kind of remember <laughs> me where i used to work in a old folks home or a... that's what it's called basically. Just kidding. yeah basically <laughs> it was pretty fun um yeah. had some good times but you definitely having seeing so many patients yeah um your your day probably i'm guessing flies by pretty quick yeah i mean Unless you're charting I, half the day. I, like I'm charting month. all the time. No, so I mean, like, people, if I, because I work right now because of COVID, I work mm -hmm. um, just because they want, you know, preventative measures. I work mm -hmm. remote for one of my facilities and mm -hmm. then I go in for the other one. So between mm -hmm. them, um, my week is split. So the one that I go in, I do have my new, like, my new admits and I'm probably, like, just depending on the week, I probably mm -hmm. see like six people or something, you know, six or seven right now, just because it's like summer. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, whoever triggers for my weights and whoever, you know, Kind of, so okay, I do okay. like I'm constantly busy. I'm so constantly like everyone's doing stuff. Mom, pretty much. Oh my gosh, I'm the nutrition lady. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like hiding in my corner. No, but just yeah, I get find their chart or like start. You know, yeah. yeah if yeah. they especially, I mean, also like they have, if they have pressure, like if they have wound stuff going on, I want to mm -hmm. see them. Uh, you know, as soon as I can, just to start like. So I, I would think that'd be like more to do with the nurse. Or so doctors. Oh I mean, no, sorry, nursing does like the treatment where they come and like do the treatment so okay. i do the nutrition intervention you're so, just, so you're like inspecting not no, no i'm doing the like if i see someone who has a stage like two three or four or deep tissue um ulcer or you mm -hmm. know un unstageable mm -hmm. so i make sure that they're well first of all i want them to make sure that how they're eating mm -hmm. is meeting their needs and then they need any kind of supplements or because for the most part if people are requiring not requirement like recommendation is if someone has um ulcers or mm -hmm. like deep, you know um ulcers you want to mm. make sure that they have their vitamin c there's a zinc you know, of, yeah skin kind of says the skin, something about the heat, diet. You know, well yeah definitely for sure okay um, but their protein needs are you know increased um a lot especially so, the older folk because their yeah, skin doesn't heal as just well. for so everyone you want to make sure that they're getting proper nutrition you might want to make sure that they have like a good source of protein mm -hmm. which for the most part like we supplement i supplement them with the protein and then just make sure that they have the correct vitamins and minerals okay just to promote wound healing um okay, gotcha. but yeah so nurses come and do like the actual like changing of the you know band-aids applying all of that but i just mm -hmm. make um from the nutrition side make sure that they're nutritionally meeting their needs for nice. 
because they have increased needs for wounds. So you talked about this a little bit, but is there anything that, uh, like anything significant that made you like, okay, I'm going to be a nutritionist? Or does it kind of just happen? (laughs) It kind of happened. I think like that class, I was like, okay, I'm going to go do it. So I went and talked to a counselor, which by the way, (laughs) was not a good idea. (laughs) Because at that time, I mean, I went to school not a long time ago, but it feels like a long time ago. When I started, it was, uh, I went, I got my undergrad at Sac State. So Mm -hmm. at Sac State at that time, it was, there was a nutrition degree, you know, the food and nutrition and then Mm -hmm. like dietetic. Like dietetics degree was a special major. So like the catalog was a little different. So when I went to declare my major, before transferring, she's like, oh yeah, nutrition degree, and this is what you do. So she kind of gave me a class to start taking. So I'm taking these classes, and then I have like a class that was like kind of like a cooking class at Sierra, and then I made a girl. I'm like, oh, she's like, oh, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I want to be a dietitian. She's like, then why are you taking? And then we started sharing like what kind of classes we're taking. Yeah. And she's like, well, why are you taking all those random classes? I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> I was so, so mad. the counselor kind of set you yeah, on the wrong path. Yeah, she set me up like for failure. Dude, <laughs> this is why we have this, this is podcast. Good. I know, this is, yeah. This if you have questions, I wish just this reach out. Was <laughs> yeah. So um, she's like, crazy. hey, my cousin goes to Sac State. They're having like, an informational night or something about like dietetics whatever you know you know go figure it out so yeah, i think yeah. it's just kind of like once the ball started rolling okay. it wasn't what classes do you not take if you want to be a dietitian oh my gosh it was something like something with like general ed i remember i had to take like micro and macro and i was so mad because <laughs> i hated him i don't know there's a couple of classes i can't remember it's been a really long okay. time since i did my undergrad dude okay um but it was just yeah i was just kind of kind of cooking classes yeah. and it was just like the i think for nutrition i think they had to take like chem 2a or something like that and then for dietetics it's like chem 1a and mm. 1b so just like classes that kind of like a Are little similar, different but yeah but specific for a different degree so okay um but yeah once the ball started rolling i just started taking more classes it, it wasn't like oh i'm like well i'm starting to do it so might as well finish it you know right, and i, right. I like like i like learning i like nutrition i like and then i had like cultural aspects of food so just different have different cultures how food affects them you know yeah, yeah, yeah. so um the only thing is like i wish i knew more before starting my <laughs> like like what do you uh, wish you knew because okay they kind of also i'm a first generation college student in my family the first yeah. one to go to college so like figuring out what classes to take like how to do school you know um i missed my deadline to transfer <laughs> okay did not know because you know because um, first yeah, first first, time, yeah yeah um but even like i think it was my senior year they had like this internship class and it was like telling you about the internship like what you specifically need you know and before people are like well just make sure you're doing your classes no one talks about like work experience school experience your science gpa your di- didactic mm-hmm. gpa you know mm-hmm. you're kind of just like okay i'm surviving i'm doing school and i'm passing my class not like passing your classes getting decent grades but you're not yeah. you know like a, a plus student yeah, all the time yeah, you know because also at the same time you're balancing stuff going on in church like balancing a job so it's like you have other things going on not just like right. school you know so I'll, in that class, they kind of lay down the roadmap for you with that, you know, the internship. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wish I did this like when I was starting. Because, you know, then you kind of build your career. I mean, your pathway to finishing your degree a little differently. Right. You know, you're not feeling like a fa- failure when you're graduating. Well, you know? Yeah, when you know, you can you kind of yeah. set yourself yeah, up Yeah, because then I'm for like, success. I was I mean, I was working. I worked all through college, but it wasn't like kind of nutrition related, you know, yeah. until it was like my senior year where I took like a class and then i got hired on as you know i was started i was there as a student and then i got hired on and okay, then kind of okay. like looked afterwards i mean having a job regardless during college is not what you think it's not like don't have a job yeah, but because yeah. you could use your transferable skill transfer you know skills oh, for sure for all anything like, but I, I just I know, like i know some guys they had no job mm-hmm. they got degrees and they've never had a job they graduated with a degree and they would go to apply and they're like hey where'd you work before yeah they've never worked before yeah. they have no work history and they're like we don't even know if this guy could handle like social skills yeah. you know so that so is any very job important is good, but it'd but be cool if you knew the specific something. yeah so uh, i think in that and then just having i think doing more research with each internship because our internships are like it's a little different not nursing some nursing programs accept like 20 30 you know 60 i don't know sex say how much they accept maybe like 60 mm-hmm. students like our sex state has a separate dietetic internship but accepts like 10 students. UC Davis has an internship that ex- accepts six students, you know? So just like- oh, Six and t- 16 students? Well, obviously students? there's a lot more nurses needed in hospitals. You could have like, some yeah, hospitals could have like 200 nurses I and like six dietitians, you know? So it's not like the job True. demand. Okay, okay. So it's like, obviously that balances out, but just you're knowing what each internship kind of- Is? Yeah, is and what they're like looking for and what like, because our internships, they have different like rankings. So mm-hmm. if this is someone's interested- 
do your research. Yeah. Because every internship has different rankings and like there's six criteria or six or eight that they look at. So they look like they look at your science GPA, your didactic GPA, your cumulative GPA, your personal statement, um, and like your work experience, your volunteer experience, something else. This is to qualify for so, an for the internship. internship. So if you if you're someone like me who didn't have a lot of like nutrition work experience i mean i had work experience but yeah. just like or like if your science gpa is not as high as your cumulative gpa like yeah. or your personal statement you feel like is not as strong as you know some you know one of your other mm -hmm. rankings look at programs that are to your benefit kind of highlight your skills or your things mm -hmm. that you're strong okay, in. you know so sense. like if uc davis is really strong in like science their science gpa is like one of their higher like because they have like a ranking that you know they score you on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so apply to a school that makes you look better kind of you know or okay, like a program so you. don't be like i have like a 2.0 science gpa and then apply <laughs> to this program that you know just because it's like uc davis are a really yeah, good school right, so okay. i think just like knowing stuff like that doing your research i think would be okay very, that's that's why yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, um, I like that. Yeah, and so, write your personal statement early because I did not. <laughs> what is personal statement? So like, it's kind of like like a biography. Kind of like why you want to be like you, like oh, in oh, your why career. you want to be. Okay. Yeah, like it's your personal statement. Like you're telling who you are and like kind of what led you to. And okay. for me, I recent like <laughs> applying to the internship was like the hardest thing in my life because really? I felt like okay, I have my degree, but I have I have stuff going. You know, like. Not that I don't have transferable skills, but yeah. you're like, well, I have no idea why I want to be a dietitian. At this point, right. you're like to make yourself like stand out in this crowd full of people who are yeah, applying, yeah. you know? And so I'm like, I have no idea. I just so love the way I you just spell love food diet. And <laughs> yeah. I like the RD behind my name, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. But it was like, I think our they application. They really want to see some passion. Exactly. Yeah? And I had none of that at that okay. point. Um, our applications open, I think, in like December and they closed in February for it, mm -hmm. the thing. And so it was like December what goes by and I'm like, in my head, I'm like, okay, I need to apply. Like, I need to just apply and then like see, you know, how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. January goes by, it's the beginning of February. And then like, I remember one time we're driving back from Tahoe with the girls and we're just kind of talking about things like you want to change about yourself or just like things that you need to work on. Yeah. And my thing was like, well, I need to apply to my internship. Like <laughs> yeah. I need to get over this. I can't do it because yeah. I'm like, I have no idea. I think for me, like the whole application wasn't scary. I think it's just like writing my personal statement, making yeah, sure like yeah. I'm standing out and have something to say, you know. But this I'm is like, where persuasive essays are yes. important. Because <laughs> you, you, you literally you persuaded have to sell, them. You have yeah. to sell yourself, you know. Um, and then also hearing people who are like, they didn't get in their first second or third round you know of like yeah. applying and you're like well if they have all those things going for them you know who am i to get accepted you know <laughs> yeah, yeah um so it was like two weeks before applications were due and i'm like okay time to write I it yes i'm doing you know applying yeah. so the whole time I, I mean i wrote my personal statement i think like julie and diana probably like proofread it you know just to see you know right. not even like some people like hire people or like you could do you know different things online um so i applied a miracle how i like ended up applying mm -hmm. then like the whole process of like we have match day so like you if you interview with the um anyways i applied so i'm like, okay if i don't get i don't get an interview that's okay but i'm like at least i went through the process of applying getting like my personal statement getting my references getting the whole application your transcript because there's a whole like thing at the application mm -hmm. that you have to and every application some of them have like additional things that you have to send in so like if i don't get an interview at least at least I applied. Mm -hmm, I got mm -hmm, this far. Next mm -hmm. year, I'll know how to fix my, you know, my application. Mm -hmm. So then, like, it went by. The match day went by. So if you interview, you have to rank the programs that you interview with, and they rank you, and then your ranking have to match up. So it's not like you might rank someone as number one, but they rank you as number six, and then mm -hmm. they have five positions. You're not going to get matched. With them. Like, it's a weird, oh, like, okay. matching system. Yeah, computerized thing. Mm -hmm. So it went by. Then, like, a week after match day or whatever, I got an email like, hey, like, take this exam, and then, like, to interview with, like, a program. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I took the ex like I took the exam, it's just like a qualifying exam. And then like she right away like emails me, hey, can you do an interview tomorrow morning? And I'm like, oh my God. This yeah. is like tomorrow morning, like, you know, whatever was over Skype. You're like, so, yes. Yeah, I'm like, okay, I guess I got I'm like, okay, got it. Like if I don't get in, like then I just at least I got through the process of like interviewing. Yeah, you with know the what it's like. Yeah. So I did the interview and then like they're like, oh, okay, anyways, they replied that I didn't like get in. And I'm like, whatever. I'm like, it's okay. At least like I know what they're expecting, yeah. what they're looking for, you know um the day i fly into ukraine yeah. i'm already like over it like i forgot like we went on a mission trip so we yeah. went to ukraine the day i fly into ukraine literally we get in the van listen my phone was still on yeah i get a call from <laughs> the program yeah and she's like hey like i'm just wondering like if you're interested in joining our like we're program. starting monday no they're starting in august thank god because this okay. was like <laughs> middle of july like end of june yeah. beginning of july and she's like i'm wondering if you're interested in the program <laughs> i'm like 
She's like, but make sure all your preceptors are lined up. I didn't know I applied to a distance program. So it's like distance, like you have to line up all your preceptors. You have to find all your own rotations. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, hey, let me know by Monday. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, okay, God. Yeah. <laughs> like I have no one lined up. I probably have one dietitian that I was working with that could like, hey, take me in for um, mm -hmm. a rotation. So I'm like, okay, let me get back to you on Monday. And I'm like, I don't want to pay because then I lose like the money. You know, you're paying a couple yeah. thousands of dollars and you're right. not even going to line up your preceptors and like it's a waste of time. So I'm sitting there, like everyone's sleeping in the van, and I'm like texting and email every single dietitian I know for like their re like their preceptors and their preceptors preceptors. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. like just anyone. I'm sitting there, I'm like, hey, I just got into a program, wondering if like you'll take on a student. Like, yeah. so honestly, it's like miracle. a miracle how how it all worked out. That's like, awesome. I got Thank like God. I'm like I started my job, and I was like, oh god, <laughs> this is it. Like it worked, you know, it worked out. But that's awesome. So we definitely talked about the the how can I part. How can you? Yes, apply. Yes. Finish, finish your undergrad. Finish undergrad. Because by 2024, dietitians are going to be required to have their master's. So if you mm. want to get grandfathered in, do it now. <laughs> Before you become yeah, a grandfather. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty so, cool. Yeah. Uh, that's pr Thank you so much for all your insight. Yeah, I think course. that's a wrap for us. And yeah. um, thank you for making time again. Yes. That was super interesting. I would love to have you back on. Uh, give me give me time to get more experience yeah, yeah. I'm so, very new. so five years down the road we're gonna do this again yes it'll be and august 20th in five years august 20th 2025 yeah. um we're probably gonna do this in like a spaceship yep this will probably be in a spaceship but we'll be heading to mars or something um but like definitely with more experience and all this yeah. stuff and then you can share all your knowledge and tell us oh how bad gosh. snickers knowledge bars is are somewhere in here but you just have to pull it you know yeah yeah, yeah. i'm sure it's gonna be cool so yeah well thanks thank for you. having me it was fun of yeah. course <laughs> boom